So big business is buying up the housing market and it's really not looking great for the individuals and the families that really wish to join in the American dream of home ownership. Does this mean that home ownership is becoming more and more a thing of the past? Stick around, let's dive in. All right, so the American dream. Long had its roots in property ownership, we know that. And this is because home ownership has been the surest path to wealth in the, in the country for the past 75 years. In 2019, households that owned their home had a median wealth of $305,000, while households that rented their home had a median wealth of just 4,084 bucks. That's nearly 75 times more than for renters. So it stands to reason that the more difficult it becomes for Americans to enter into home ownership, the more difficult it will be for them to build any substantial or meaningful wealth. And this is why it's alarming to see so many businesses gaining the market share of the housing market now, as more and more properties are being snatched up by these big businesses, it makes home buying for families and individuals a lot more difficult, and it forces them to remain as renters. Now recently, the new home market is, has seen a massive trend in this direction, due in part now to, to individual buyers pulling back from the market following the recent increase in mortgage rates. Now, this drop in demand has sent home builders scrambling to find new buyers, and large companies who buy in bulk have really answered that call at this point. Home builders, which really enjoyed record profits during the pandemic era, real estate boom that we all just experienced, they're really facing a new reality now. There's a drop in demand that's instigated by these rising interest rates. And there's fewer and fewer individuals that are seeking new homes. So builders are they're really turning to large companies buying single family homes in bulk and then operating them as rental properties. Now, one of the largest companies that's uh, doing this is called Predium Partners, and it's got more than 85,000 single family rentals nationwide. In a report released this month, the firm said that it expects to have a huge opportunity to purchase home builders over the next six to 12 months, as they're now facing these, this increased pressure to sell their growing inventory of completed homes in the slower moving market now. Other large companies are seeing the same thing with American Homes for Rent, Invitation Homes, and Tricon Residential. They're all saying that they expect to receive calls from home builders that are looking to unload inventory. Such opportunities for deep pocketed landlords could only improve as more individual buyers pull back from the market amid higher mortgage rates and economic uncertainty. So this is the time to have your money ready to deploy, folks, if you wanna be a part of that. The market for newly built homes has always been more responsive to changes in demand than that of the existing home market, but the difference really may be more stark this time because of the choices that builders were making amid the pandemic. Traditionally, home builders would want to sell the house before starting construction guaranteeing then that there would actually be a buyer when the home was finished. Um, this wasn't the case amid the pandemic and shortages in supply chains produced difficulty really in meeting the building deadlines while prices were also rising so fast that builders were no longer incentivized to sell the homes too quickly, right? So builders started selling homes later in the building cycle, which was a strategy that while risky, worked really well during the pandemic. But this strategy has crushed once the Fed began aggressively raising the interest rates, which really cooled demand in a sector that was now largely based on anticipation of continued high demand. In July, the, uh, the Census Bureau reported that sales of new single family homes fell to a year over year pace of 511,000 units compared to 588,000 in the prior month. The recent pace of sales of new homes is the slowest on record since January of 2016. More gloomy news. In July, single family starts fell to a year over year pace of 916,000. And according to the census data, that's the lowest pace since June of 2020, right after the pandemic began. Um, Pulte Group, the nation's third largest home builder, told investors in late July that its second quarter net new orders were down 23% compared with the same time in 2021. And its cancellation rate was also up 15% after reporting 7% in the same quarter the year before. Now, the single family rental sector, it's already expanded quickly since um, the onset of the pandemic, although large institutional firms really still hold less than 3% 
of about 20 million U.S. single-family rentals, according to estimates by Roofstock. Still, this growth has alarmed housing activists and lawmakers who accuse these firms of crowding out the typical home buyer and making homes less affordable. So large single-family rental owners argue that they are doing just the opposite. They're providing a needed service right now for residents that prefer to rent a house instead of own, at least uh, in this period of time. According to Nishu Sood, he's, the, uh, he's Pretium's uh, head of real estate research, deals with single family rentals companies represent a small percentage of overall production for the housing construction industry. And home builders really can mitigate the risk and build more units by cutting deals with these big investors such as Pretium. And he believes that this makes for a more stable market while simultaneously meeting the demands of the rental market that's out there. There's a, been a boost in rental demand as more and more buyers are choosing to wait for interest rates to come back down before buying their next or even forever home. Uh, interestingly enough, there's also an increase in uh, rental demand coming from people like myself that chose or still do choose to live as a digital nomad. And that basically means that as a remote worker, um, we can choose geographical mobility and flexibility versus putting roots down in a single place for the foreseeable future. Easier to do without children than with children, of course, but uh, there is a big community there. And perhaps the American dream is really just kind of changing right now that comes uh, different from the security that home ownership has provided for so long to more of the freedom that comes with geographical mobility. But time will tell if this kind of change means that we're gonna see a massive decline in, in wealth in the middle class uh, with such a large difference in wealth between homeowners and renters. Um, a difference that was 7,500% in 2019. Are we gonna see the, the, the deterioration of the wealth of the middle class with all that wealth transferring to companies like Pritium or will we see a change in how wealth is generated? Personally, it would be my recommendation being somebody who, who lives this lifestyle and is able to go where I want, when I want, for as long as I want, spend what I want on generosity, on selfishness, and not worry much about price tags, that only happens when you're building wealth by managing your cash flow. And that comes from earning as much as possible while spending as little as possible to still have the lifestyle you want. And, uh, and that means you've gotta have assets. I don't think this should mean people are not owning homes. Uh, and this would be a, a counterpoint I would make to my digital nomad community who has enjoyed the lifestyle I have, I still have that lifestyle being paid for for me by the assets that I have. So the homes that I own generate considerable amounts of rental income, which then afford me the ability to do that while still ideally spending less to do it. Now, what I will say, and this is a side note, me being on the road for six months last year, living in an RV, it was an extremely expensive lifestyle to live. So. Uh, it's, it's unrealistic to expect you're gonna go out and pay these types of gas prices. The place I parked my rig for five months of last year after I had sort of decided to, to plant some roots uh, again, it just for, for basically storing it there and using it when I needed it was 1,250 bucks a month. So it is not inexpensive even just to park one of these rigs. Um, so keep in mind that there really are a lot of ways to generate wealth. Um, real estate is certainly one of the best ways to do so. Um, we feature a lot of different ways to build your wealth, some having to do with real estate, others that don't. It's all about choosing something that really matches your risk tolerance and your ability to remain consistent to it. Consistency, once again, remains the key. When growing your cash flow, no matter what you choose to do, just be sure to give it your attention 100%. And that means daily. Now, like I said, we do talk about wealth building opportunities all the time on this channel. So make sure you check out some of the most popular. I'll put those links in the description for you so you can find them easily. We also discuss ways to enter into the real estate market so you can find yourself on the home ownership side of things despite the changing trends right now. Um, do you think that the American dream is dead? The old fashioned American dream is dead? Is that a bad thing if it is dying? Is it heading in a better or worse direction at the moment? And if it's not the old fashioned way of an American dream, is there a more modern approach to building wealth and a new American dream? In my opinion, there is. As a person that loves geographical mobility and freedom, to be able to go where I want when I want, 
looking at a more modern way of accomplishing this through the use of technology and the internet has provided me many solutions and more and more solutions are introduced every day. It's literally an infinite supply of ways that you can achieve that and work digitally and maybe even still have a home and have your cake and eat it too. I think that that's really the approach I'm always looking to, uh, to achieve and it's managed to work out in the last uh, dozen years at this point. So I've been very, very lucky with that. Um, at this point, guys, uh, I'm going to leave you with those links in the description. Be sure to check out some of those videos so that you can perhaps start to make small adjustments to how you're going about your day-to-day -day routine that may end up proving a long-term way for you to have the exact magic wand lifestyle you've always been dreaming of. Make it your new American dream. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Until then, keep on cash flowing. Take care.